So this is a continuation of what we covered yesterday. We didn't quite have time to get here. So yesterday we talked about whether about how to tell when functions are even or odd. And we also wanted to talk a little bit about transformations, which is the part we couldn't quite get to. So this is a continuation from yesterday. It has the same title and objective. Let's just dive right into it. And this won't take long, and then we'll get to uh, review for the quiz tomorrow. So. So, up to this point, we've done a lot of work with polynomials. We've graphed polynomials. We've um, uh, we've graphed polynomials. We've uh, uh, divided polynomials. Did to have done various operations with polynomials. Now today, we're going to transform polynomials. So, transforming polynomials is pretty straightforward. So. Given some polynomial, f of, f of x We can represent transformations of that polynomial. With A times f of x minus h plus v. OK. Oop, I got a few people coming in. So what do each of these represent? Well. This is so. This v out here that will that is a vertical translation. That moves our graph up and down. This minus h is a horizontal translation. Sarah Lynn, your mic's on. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Happens to the best of us. OK, so the H is a horizontal translation. That moves our graph left and right. So the plus, plus V on the outside moves us up and down. The minus H on the inside moves us left and right. And this A is a vertical stretch making a bigger stretches 
the function up and down. So, what does this look like with an actual function? This is just, this is a function notation thing. So, so say I have f of x equals x to the, let's say, fifth power. Well, what would g of x equals 2x to the fifth power, or sorry, 2x minus 3 to the fifth power, let's say, plus 1 look like? Well, we can see that we're, that we're adding or subtracting to the x before anything else happens to the x. So this in here is the horizontal translation of 3. Now, we are subtracting a number, which means that we are moving right by 3. This plus one on the outside is a vertical translation. So that means we're moving up by one. And this two in front is a vertical stretch of two. That makes, that's going to make it twice as tall. So let's go ahead and go to Desmos and let's take a look. So that you can see it, so you can see it in action here. All right, so here we have x to the fifth power acting as our parent function, and I have it written here. And here is, all, is the different transformations I can do to it. Now, I've left Oh, wait, I'm using, it looks like I'm using K there. I'll make that a V to match what we have on the board. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these sliders, and you can see what they do. And we can check to see that our assessment here that our, what was correct. So first, let's do the horizontal shift. So at the moment, we are subtracting h. And I said h is 0. So at the moment, it is x minus h. So what happens when I make it a, x minus 3? Well, as you can see, as you can see, it is moving to the right. What about adding 1? Making V1. Yes? Sarah's trying to get into the Zoom. Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, 
I've been pressing the admit button. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, I, I've been I've been seeing that. Let me see. I see her here. She's in the list. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, oh. I'm in now. Okay, uh, you're all good. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. That's that's the important thing. Okay. So anyway. The vertical shift here, we can see that's been that can moves our function up and down. There we go. Now, what about changing a? So it looks kind of like making a bigger makes the whole thing skinnier, and it does. Um, uh, when when you stretch up and down like this. That also causes it to become skinnier, but we st nonetheless refer to it as a vertical stretch. There we go. So we moved to the right by three, up by one, and then stretched vertically. And this is true for no matter what our polynomial looks like. Like what if I have, I don't know, x to the third, let's say x to the fourth power here. All right. So I want to convince you for a moment that this, that changing a, changing this number in front really does represent a vertical stretch. So to do that, I'm going to put in a vertical line at x equals 1, so that that way we can see what the effect of changing this number in front actually does. So as, the num as we change this leading coefficient, as we change this number in front, we can see that our function is getting taller. As I set, set it to 2, we can see that it became twice as tall as the parent function. And it's twice as tall no matter where I, no matter where I move this to. Like, so if we set x to 2, they're green has a height of 16, and blue has a height of 32. So, cha so a changing a just multiplies how tall our function is everywhere, everywhere along its domain. It makes everything it makes it go up twice as far as it did before. And that's about it for the basics of function transformations. Adding numbers on the outside shifts us up and down. Subtracting numbers on the inside moves us right and left. Multiplying a number, our function, by something makes it, um, uh, make, stretches it vertically. The one thing that I'll add is that this function notation also gives us a little bit of flexibility. So will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay.
So let's say we have f of x equals x squared minus 2x. What function would represent f of x with a vertical shift down by 2 and right or the vertical oh and a horizontal shift there we go and a horizontal shift right by 3 So it says here that adding a number on the outside represents our vertical shifts. So here we want to shift down by 2. So we're going to subtract 2 from this guy. It's pretty straightforward. So it's going to be f of so it's going to be f of x minus 2. But we also have this horizontal shift right by 3. And it says here that we need to just have f of x minus our horizontal shift. So it'll be f of x minus 3. So what this means is that we're replacing all of our inputs, all of our x's, with x minus 3's. So our end result would be, let's call it g of x. We're replacing each of our x's with the x minus 3's. And we're subtracting 2 in order to shift the whole thing down. So this is what the transform function will look like. Now, if we want, we can, if we want, we can uh, simplify this, you know, multiply x minus 3 by itself, distribute this 2 in there, combine like terms. And then we can end up with a, sim with, a, uh, simpl with a simplified version of the equation. Now, let's go ahead and check our work by graphing these two and seeing that, or graphing this and this, f and g there. In seeing if in seeing if our conclusion was correct, so our parent function is x squared minus two x. This parabola here, and its transformation is x minus three squared minus two times x minus three minus 2. All right, and so we can clearly see that we shifted to the right. 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2. So we were able to success, so we successfully transformed our function. So whenever you need to shift something vertically, you just add or subtract on the end of the function. Whenever you want to shift something horizontally, you add or subtract from the x's, or t's, or v's, or whatever variable you're using, usually x. All right. And that is about that for this.
we could we're having a little bit of extra time today meant we were able to cover cover it in a little more detail. But it does mean that we are that we have a shortage of time for quiz review. So what I'm going to do instead of you know doing an example problem for each type for each type of question that's going to be on the quiz tomorrow. I'm going to write down, you know, a list of the type of questions that are going to be on the quiz and if and uh, y'all can speak up and ask to go over specific topics. So, quiz overview. What are the different things that'll be on the quiz? We're going to have questions about degree in standard form of a polynomial. graphing or let me see hold up one moment that's not quite the right way of putting it finding the equation from a graph adding subtracting and multiplying polynomials Synthetic division. Both with and without remainders. polynomial identities. Give me just a moment. Let me see. I feel like I'm missing a few things. Let me just take a look at the quiz. 
I did get it written last night, so. Okay, let me see. Symmetry. So even odd or neither and transformations the thing we looked at today There are 10 questions. I would say about half of them are multiple choice. All right, so there is there any subject in particular where you'd like where you'd like me to where do you like us to go over an example in class? Um, the one that says finding the equation from a graph, can we go over that one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Give me just a moment to to get a question set up. So the question
might say something like this. Find the zeros of the polynomial. Then use those to find its equation. I'm not sure what wording I use on the actual question that I wrote, but it'd be something like this. And then it would show you, then I would, ha so I would have a question like this, and then there would be a graph associated with it. Let's get a Let's say that our graph looks something like this. Let's see. In the name of making things a little bit clearer, I'm going to Okay. Let's see and zeros here. here. And say that our graph looks something like this. So the first thing it's asking us to do here is it's asking us to find the zeros. Well, what are the zeros? Well, the zeros are the places where our function crosses the x-axis. So I see here that we have zeros here, here, and here. So the zeros are negative 3, negative 1, and 0. 0, negative 3, negative 1, or 0, negative 1, negative 3. All right? Make sense so far? Now, how can we use that to help find, to find the graph of our equation? Well, our equation would need these three as zeros, yeah? So plugging in zero would need to make the whole thing zero, which means that x would need to be multiplying our entire thing. Now for the rest of it, we need terms, or not terms exactly, but we need bubbles. We need a space, we, or we need factors here, where when I plug in these numbers, it'll make the whole thing become zero. So if I plug in negative three, then the whole thing needs to go to zero. So we need an x plus three term. And when I plug in negative one, I need the whole thing to go to zero. So I need an x minus one term. Does that make sense? You know what, actually I need to move everything here a little bit to the left so I have a little bit more space. Y equals x. So we need a term we're plugging, or we need a factor we're plugging in zero makes the whole thing cancel out. We need a term we're plugging in negative three makes the whole thing cancel out. And a term we're plugging in negative one 
makes the whole thing cancel out. Now we're not actually done yet. So we learned about something called the multiplicity of a zero, which tells us that the number of times a zero shows up in the equation is represented in the graph by whether it crosses or crosses or has a turning point at the x-axis. Places where we cross, let me see, places where we cross, have an odd multiplicity Which is usually going to be one, which usually means that the zero only shows up once, which means that it has an exponent of one or three or five, usually one. So this would be x to the one power, this would be x plus three to the one power, in all likelihood. But where it has a turning point, That means that our, that's where our function is touching and then moving away. So this has an even multiplicity. Which means that the factor has an even exponent. Whoa, let me zoom out a smidge there. Usually two. Now anything to the one power is just itself. So our final equation should look something like this. And then you can check your work with Desmos. So let's do that. Let's check our work with Desmos. Share screen button. Share screen button. So we have our, our zeros are x plus 3. Or our zero is uh, one zero is negative three, so I have an x plus three term. We have a zero that is an x plus one, but it has an even multiplicity, so maybe two as its exponent. And finally, there's an x. And the commutative property of multiplication tells us we can put it in any order, so I guess I might as well put it in front. And there we go. And so we can see. We have zeros crossing the x-axis at negative three and zero, and a zero touching the x-axis at negative one. So the bottom line is to find the equation from a graph, you find the zeros, and then you write out factors associated with those zeros. Did that help? All right. So back to our big list here. Anything else you'd like us to talk about?
um, the symmetry even or odd or neither? Sure. Okay. So, this might have the question, just to make something up off the top of my head, is the function oh, let's say f of x equals x to the fourth power minus 2x squared plus 1 even odd or neither. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. If you have familiarity with how even and oddness works in an equation, then you could just look at this and know. But if you but since we haven't really talked about that kind of shortcut and it's occasionally fallible, some other ways to do it might be to graph it and see if it's even or odd. Remember that even functions have reflectional symmetry around the x-axis when odd functions. Let's see, I can't really represent an odd something odd with my hand, so I guess I kind of can. Whereas odd functions, good. <laughs> I'll just draw it. Whereas odd functions have rotational symmetry around the origin. If I rotate it around the origin, I'll get back what I started. But probably the best way to do this is to use the formulas. For an even function, f of negative x is the same as f of x. Plugging in a negative number gives me the same result as plugging in the positive version of that number. Whereas for an odd function, plugging in a negative number gets me the negative, gets me the same outcome of plugging in the positive number, but negative. So either way, we can find if something is even or odd by plugging in negative x and seeing what happens. So let's do it. Let's plug in negative x. What is f of negative x equal? Well, we're replacing each of our x's with negative x's. All right, so what is negative x times negative x? Positive x? It's not positive x, it's going to be positive x squared, right? You know, negative x times negative x. Well, that is a negative times a negative is a positive, and x times x is x squared. Fair enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. So this is negative 2x squared plus 1. And what is negative x to the fourth power equal? What does that simplify to? A positive? Yeah, so it's going to give us a positive number, a negative times a negative. See, we already know what negative x times negative x is. It's x squared. Same thing here. And what is x squared times x squared? x4. x to the fourth power. Well, look at that. Plugging in negative x 
gave us back what we started with. So is this function even or odd? Even? It is even because plugging in negative x gives us the same result as f of x. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, uh, if plugging in a negative number gets you the same outcome as, as uh, plugging in the positive version of that or plugging in negative x gives you the same result as just plugging in regular x, then it's even. For odd functions, plugging in a negative x would make the would give you the same result as this, just with everything having swapped signs. All right, so we got just a few minutes left. Any uh, any last minute questions about the quiz tomorrow? All right. Well, if that's everything you need, then that is that for today. I will see you guys on Monday. Um, uh, and uh, good luck on the, good luck with the quiz tomorrow. So you can each of you can uh, look at the go back and look at the uh, recordings for all of these. If you need if you want if you need to refresh your memory, go back and look at the checks for understanding. And that should be about that. I will see you guys tomorrow. No, Monday. I'll see you guys Monday. <laughs>